Good evening. It's Wednesday evening and it's just a little after seven and it is time for Keto Confab. My name is Elizabeth Hansen and I'm your host for this meeting. We are a group that wants to support those who want to follow the keto lifestyle, especially according to the teachings of Dr. Annette uh, Bosworth. And you're welcome to join and uh, share with us and ask questions or whatever. And so tonight we, we don't, we're few in number, but the great in brain cell workage, I'm sure. Um, so the last few weeks, um, I've been thinking that um, maybe our meeting needs a little more structure or a plan to it. Um, but I'm not really sure where to go with it. It's basically become a, a personal bitch session, <laughs> pardon the French, um, for where I've gone wrong on keto <laughs> um, and, and everything. And we, we have talked about, you know, recipes and uh, changing things in the diet or where to find particular um, yogurts that are more keto friendly or whatever. So I wanted to ask the group tonight um, how you would like to see the group change or evolve or what we should add to make this experience more supportive or better. Um, so just wanted to ask that and throw it out to you guys. an interesting question because in all the groups I'm in every group is run different and I like each group for the way they do it so it's hard to say you know like one person she comes in with a thought a mindset thought and brings that up and that is really interesting because if you can apply that to the rest of your journey um another group i'm in we just sit there and she says okay what did you do this week good bad indifferent what's your plans for this week and she makes you think and as you're talking she will come up with ideas and really drill you you know that's an interesting one sometimes they can get very uncomfortable with when she's asking <laughs> you questions you know maybe you don't want to dig that deep um and then some like last night, they just sit there and let people talk and do what they want to. And, you know, after a while, that can get a little old. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, each group is different and it's hard to say. Like I say, I like each group for the way they do things. That's why I attend so many. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think one thing, a couple of things that are kind of top of mind for me recently was I was on a, a support group last night with Wilma and um, and maybe I should start my own group at some point. But for now, it's like I think some of these groups would be good if, if at the beginning of the meeting they had a, um, a fasting check in window for those people that might have to check out because they're trying to fast. Maybe they don't want to get into the food talk. But my, maybe they need, they're coming because they need a little support to get through the day, you know, before people get into other conversations. It was just a thought. And then I was on another support group. It wasn't related to keto. And when I guess when everybody opened up and started the meeting, we, we always started the meeting with really short. It was like um, wins. What would you change? And what are you grateful for? And each person would answer those things before we get into anything else in the meeting. And it was sort of, I think it was level setting for everyone because it's always good to land on a piece of gratitude, whatever it is, um, just from my thoughts. Um, but I learned like Wilma, I learned something from every group, you know, it's really awesome. Um, and that's why I come here. Yeah, um, my original thought and the way we started was I was using the book Keto Continuum mm. and I went through each um, not just chapter but section of the book about um, beginning and other things and then then I finished that and I'm like okay now what do I do <laughs> and 
one of the groups I'm in, she picks a book every once in a while and we go through it. We've done through Atomic Habits. Um, All right. We're thinking about going through some of Bronson's books now since he's doing a challenge starting October 1st, Coach Bronson. And so, you know, she picks up a book and we read it and we talk about it. And that's interesting too. Okay. Well, I was thinking that maybe what we could do, um, I do like the check-in with um, what was one win this week? What would you have changed this week and what you're grateful for? I do like that. Um, and leaving any food chatter till the end. So if there are people who are fasting, they can exit stage right <laughs> at that time. Um, uh, and so I was, I was, I, I'm almost finished reading, you know, oops. I'll be back. <laughs> oh, well, um, I'm almost finished reading this book and I do like, I do like these myths, uh, the 12 myths about food that he has in the beginning of the book. Um, and I thought, you know, maybe we could go through and, you know, discuss these myths, uh, discuss these myths and how other people perceive the myths and how we would talk to others about the myths. Um, and, and everything. So that's an idea I had. Um, and, you know, I mean, but I'm not going to require people buy the book, you know, read chapter one by next Wednesday or something like that. But um, I, I think it would be good for us to become stronger on um, these myths and, and why they're actually myths and they're not true. Because I think if our knowledge, our beliefs, our, our firm faith that these are, are not, these myths are not true, I think it will help us stay the course better, is what I'm thinking. And have you read the book? Um Wise to your doctor told you by Dr. Barry. Yes, I, I that would love be a good that. one to go through too. Yeah, that would be another good idea. Yeah, yeah. Um, so maybe maybe we'll do that. I can't say I can start that next week. I've got several little projects going on, um, including one mommy that's about to give birth, and so. Um, uh, and um, I, I can't say that I'd be ready to, to lead that um, next week, but maybe beginning October, we could go through these myths. And once we're done with these myths, maybe then we could go on to Dr. Barry's book because I love Dr. Barry's book. <laughs> uh, I love that book. I, I bought it, I don't know how long ago, but yeah, but that would give me a chance to review that too. Um, because I wanna make sure that these meetings aren't just meeting my needs to whine to somebody, <laughs> you know, um, and that they're not annoying people by as much food talk. Um, we, we've been pretty good, but there are some weeks we do go off the deep end on food. Um, and unfortunately, when you're on a program like this, it is necessary to talk to others about food, yeah. you know? And um, so that's what my thoughts are right now. Um, are you guys into something like that about going through the myths and stuff? Okay. Because we don't get a lot of new, new people um, here in the group. Uh, and so I don't think I want to go back to the beginning of keto continuum and go through the steps of getting started again. Um, I, I don't think that's useful. And, um, but, but I do want to have a little more structure and mm. everything. Uh, anyway, so, okay, let's start with our win and our what we would change. 
and um, what we're grateful for was was that the yeah, three that's what I was thinking yeah okay so let's see my win this week is to have been under 100 all day today and most of the day yesterday on my blood sugar I'm, I'm very happy about that and what I would change <laughs> what I would change um that I would get up earlier in the day and go to bed earlier and eat supper earlier. The, the whole earlier theme is something I would like to change. And what I am grateful for. I'm, I'm actually grateful that I even started this whole thing. I mean, you know, the whole keto thing that I actually, actually did it. <laughs> because so many times I think about, oh yeah, that'd be good to do, but I never get around to it. But I'm, I'm very thankful for actually doing it. So, um, Wilma, what's your win, what you change, and your, what you're grateful for? Well, the win would be that even though I was finishing up my 46 hour fast, I was able to go walk two miles in the water pool. And then I sat in the sauna for 30 minutes. And then I came home and the ketones were 0.5. <laughs> but hey, at least I had ketones. <laughs> they, weren't, they weren't low anymore. They were 0.5. So that's the win. Mm -hmm. Um. I, what I would change is we're getting ready to leave again and trips are always a challenge for me. So we're packing our food and trying to think what we can take and everything. And so my win would be, or changing is trying to make sure we can stay on plan instead of going out and getting some stuff we shouldn't. Mm -hmm. And grateful for finding keto, finding Dr. Boz, finding all the groups that I attend because every group I learn something. And, it, and sometimes it's a just a little comment somebody made that they don't think is important, but all of a sudden it goes, ding, that hits home. So yeah, that's what I'm grateful for is all the groups. Right. Okay, Chris. So let's see, my win. I made it through another fast this week. Wasn't as long as I wanted, but I made it through another one, and which means I'm probably going to start one next week. Uh, what I change is I think maybe I'm not as successful in the fast because I where I end my fast. Um, so I work from home. I mean, I work in the office on Wednesdays, and that's the last day of my fast. And it's actually you know, kind of the hardest. And you'd think that, you know, I'm away from food, it should be easier, but um, a little more conscious of the people around me and maybe, you know, not having food in me, I'm a little snitty or something like that. So I get a little more self-conscious and I, and I got lightheaded today and I was like, if I got lightheaded at home, I might not have been as worried about it. But where I was in the office, I was, I was like, you know, I need to take a little extra care. So I'm thinking maybe I should shift my start of my fasting um, a little bit so that when I'm ending, I'm, I'm, can, there, I'm someplace I can fight through it, maybe. I don't know. Um, so that's just a thought about changing. And then grateful. I'm grateful to be able to talk to you folks. I am pretty isolated. Um, I don't have a good social group. Keto has become my social group, which is nice. And um, I love hearing everyone's story. I love if I can offer anything to help anyone, it's kind of a good exchange. It's, it's, it's goes two ways. Um, but I'm really grateful to have all of you. Okay. Um, Scott, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Um, okay. My, so, my computer still doesn't have video. <laughs> okay. But so uh, yeah. we'd like a win so, of what you'd like to change. Well, right. and... Yeah, this, this week I was able to talk to a couple of the students about the, the keto diet. So that's a win. Uh, although I don't know if they're uh, going to do any of it, but uh, you know, <laughs> uh, and uh, 
I don't know if there's too much I would change. I, I think maybe um, if I, I probably would wish I would would have eaten less sugar this uh, this week. Uh, and then you know I'm I'm grateful for the, um, uh, the the Zoom technology that actually allows us to do something like this, uh, especially you know living in a rural area where uh, uh, there aren't too many uh people right close by that are uh doing keto uh, that we know of anyway so i think that's uh, okay, yeah um renee you came in a little late that's okay um but uh when we began this evening i um asked the group i, I told them that i feel sometimes that <laughs> our group becomes a little bitch and moan session from me about my frustrations and that I've felt for a while that we should have a little more structure. So we've talked about that a little bit and Chris had a suggestion. Well, actually she had a couple of good suggestions. The first one was um, that we begin the meeting by letting each person there tell their win of the week, what they would change and what they're grateful for. And um, then she also had another idea. She says, especially for people who are currently in a fast, sometimes the talk about food and, and everything is frustrating. And maybe we could structure our meeting to where we keep food talk to the end so that anyone who's fasting could opt out and not miss anything else of the discussion. And I think that's a good point. And then Wilma, said that some other groups will read through books together. And so I told them that these um, 12 myths that are at the beginning of this book, I was thinking that maybe we should pick one, you know, I should present one each week and we should discuss that because the better uh, grounded we are in why it's a myth and everything, the better we're able to resist things or to talk to others about them. Um, so those were very good ideas. Scott was out at the moment, so he didn't put in his ideas, but I'm sure he'll let me know. And if you have any further ideas, that would be good. But right now, we would like to hear your win, what you want to change, and what you're grateful for. Mm. I that's a real challenge. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I am hosting a couple, uh, a young woman and a young man who are getting their lives back together. So the last week has been a huge challenge. Um, I eat keto. They do not. Um, they qualify for all the food in the food banks, which is not keto friendly. <laughs> and which is fine, actually, because most of what they've eaten, I mean, is cool you know and they 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 choose to eat at a different spot than I do and of course different times um I think my win is probably the fact that I have been able to be around all these yummy smelling foods that I used to eat and I'm not going bonkers yay you know like tonight one of my favorite things that they cook that I like have my own recipe like been handed down to the family homemade spaghetti sauce <laughs> yeah they cooked spaghetti tonight <clears throat> mm. the smell was scrumptious um but even so i didn't i i kind of wanted the pasta but i mean about as fast as i wanted the pasta i didn't care and that i mean i don't know how to say that that makes sense i mean it smelled good the thought of eating it sounded good but at the same time i'm like nah it's like I could go without, and that's probably a first in a long time for something that I normally crave if I smell it. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a that's a win. Um, and then what, what were the other two things? What would you change? Um, I would change probably having someone here right now. <laughs> yeah. I, I love them, but you know, and and I they're 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 getting ready to go into a drug rehab center. And so for, for me, it's just like having a week long guest because 
if you're like me, no one dries your dishes the way you do. No one washes them the way you do. And they certainly don't put them back where you, <laughs> you can't find them. So, and all of those are just nitpicky annoyances. They're really sweet kids. In fact, I've known the young man since he was very, very young. He was a good friend of my oldest boys, uh, my oldest son. And um, so it's it's been a delight having them here and they've got a dog, which has irritated the crap out of my cat. <laughs> which has been kind of a joy <laughs> to watch her have to understand that the world does not revolve around her oh poor sunshine <laughs> so she's learned how to avoid the dog and the dog is only 11 months old so he's still a puppy and he thinks fat he thinks sunshine is you know the moon and the sun he loves her and she's like going oh mm -mm, baby you're a dog get away <laughs> but she is learning at this point they've been here for for a week and so she's learning to tolerate having them around but she does still hiss at them when they go near our space which is where i'm sitting right now <laughs> um okay i got the first two and then that was what would i change what am i uh, grateful for um i am grateful for the fact that they're here because it's been delight to have something with two legs that will talk back to me here <laughs> I love my cat and she does talk to me, but I can't quite figure out her, what she's actually saying. I kind mm -hmm. of like make, make up my own discussions when we, she meows back to me. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I guess my other grateful is, uh, or thankful for my brother was here uh, about the second day they had been here. And it was so, it was so good to see my brother and we talked to the architect while he was here. So the plans for the expansion of my clinic are now underway. So we've paid the architect and he's drawing up the plans and it's, and then we're also going to make my upstairs into a fully enclosed apartment. So the plans for, the, like I said, the, all the plans are doing that. So I'm grateful that he is drawing up the plans. And right now I'm just kind of in this fingers crossed mode that what how much it will cost to do all that will be in a line with what our budget is and the architect seems to think it will be well under what we you know what we want to spend or what we're you know the max we'd be willing to spend but not quite to the bottom line of what we'd like to spend so that's a good thing okay so, good. so. Oh, and i do have a voice again seriously grateful for that <laughs> yeah yeah finally got my doctor to call in an antibiotic so i i have speech um and, and my head doesn't feel like it's 18 feet thick from the sinus infection that i kept telling her i have a sinus infection that's why i don't have a voice that's why i have pharyngitis i got this two years ago i get it every two years just call me in a dad gun antibiotic and everybody be happy mm -hmm. Sorry, Christine, you're getting to meet me for the first time. I'm a little bit strange. I might have seen you once before, but maybe you didn't have your voice then. <laughs> no, I, I, think, I think you guys have met once before, but it was a while ago. I think my name, I usually change my name to Stina. I usually go by Stina on all the social things. So that might ah. have yeah. Yeah. And and that made me think. Oh, is this the Christine we've met, or is this someone else? Yeah, that's I me. I go back to work. It's Christine, and then play it's Dina. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, okay. So, anybody have anything else they want to share? Well, here comes anybody Anna. doing BB and E for September? What? Pardon? Beef, butter, bacon, and eggs diet. No, um, I'm. I'm gonna go try. I'm gonna try to go more towards the carnivore for a little bit, just to see if it works. And there's a, you know, I think Two Crazy Ketos is doing the challenge. There are a couple other groups might be doing it too. I've never done it before. I've been really keto with vegetables, so I'm gonna try it. Yeah. Um. Well, the other day I ate way too many cucumbers. I, I thought I was eating an okay number of cucumbers, but I went a little crazy on the cucumbers and my blood sugar was high. I'm like, hey, how is my blood sugar going high from cucumbers? But 
I don't know. I don't know. I guess cucumbers and I just don't get along. Um, I mean, I like cucumbers and I only had lemon juice on them. And the lemon juice didn't have any added sugar or anything. It's all natural lemon juice. So I don't know. Um, but so I'm, I'm watching how much of a vegetable I eat because before I was like, you know what? I'm going to play like I'm on Weight Watchers and vegetables are free, you know, <laughs> on Weight Watchers. If you're counting points, vegetables are free. Well, they're not free on keto. <laughs> and um, I think Melody, who's joined us, um, knows that better than any of us since she's our vegetarian. Um, so anyway, so Melody, um, I know you're able to turn on your sound. Um, and we were talking earlier today that we thought it would be helpful, useful, and fun um, to share our win of the week, our what we would like to change, and what we're grateful for. So do you think you could turn on your sound and share that with us? Or no, you could type it in the chat if you want. Um, while Melody does that, I just checked my blood sugar again. I'm getting a little obsessive about that because, you know, those few numbers that were above, um, what's the question? The question is, what is your win of the week? <laughs> my win of the week is that I've been a day and a half with no blood sugars over 100, which I'm very happy about. Uh oh, lost Christine again. She fell off before. She might be back. And uh, Renee's win of the week is she has people staying with her for this week, but she was able to resist their spaghetti and other things. Guess you haven't thought about it. Well, we'll give yeah, you. Yeah, I had to think about it live, Melody. So don't don't feel bad. <laughs> I was like, on, what? We'll wait for you. I said that's quite the challenge. <laughs> yeah hey if i can find a win you guys can find a win um so the Maybe other your thing win was that you got enough sleep for last night and you have it the last four nights <laughs> <laughs> well that would be a win as well yes um one of the things i've changed this week is I, you know, I'm not reacting so much to dairy products anymore like I used to. And so I had gotten a little free with the sour cream, a <laughs> little bit free with it. And um, I actually have cut that out now. I'm going to have to go back to so dairy. Cream. Dairy messes you up. Is that what you're, is that? Yeah, dairy messes me up. Okay. And, and it messes some people up. It doesn't mess everybody up, but it, it seems to mess me up. It used to make my nose run something terrible and, um, and everything, but it, it doesn't do that anymore. It just, it, it keeps the, the water weight on me. And yeah. um, so given, given that up, it's, it's sad, but it's okay. Well, I I could give you an upcoming plus. Okay. I, I'm scheduled to get my next steroid shot in my knee, so maybe I can do some walking. My last shot did not help at all. Oh, Zero. that's too bad. I mean, the one, the first one I got, I went nine months before I had to have my next one. He was blown away. Oh. And the next shot, it was like, he may, he may as well put water in my knee. It just did not do anything well we can hope that you get another nine month or that would be nice because i mean it's cool enough now that it would actually be nice to walk outside yeah i won't melt yeah so melody have you thought of a win yet she says she keeps losing her connection tonight no that's christine oh that's christine sorry yeah apparently my loss is that i can't read <laughs> I've got my voice back, but I've gone, you know, brain damaged on reading. <laughs> it, happens, reading. Hmm. <laughs> it happens. It happens. 
So anyway, um, yeah, so since I've been watching my blood sugars more carefully, um, you know, I've noticed that um, carbs from vegetables make my blood sugar go up, but um, milk products don't make my blood sugar go up, which is great, you know, since they're mostly fat. Well, the ones I eat are fat. Um, and, um, but uh, they make me retain fluid, which is not a good choice. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I don't like retaining fluid. So anyway, but in the couple of days that I've totally backed off of milk products, um, my back isn't hurting as much as it was. And that used to be uh, related to just butter. Uh, when I'd eat butter, my back would feel inflamed and very sore. Um, so, okay, Melody says, well, I guess I can say I have been under 20 carbs this week. Wow, that's fabulous. Yeah, well, it's only Wednesday, but hey, you're doing good, Melody. <laughs> yeah, we got to take the wins where we can find them. Yeah, okay. no kidding. So now the next question you got to mull over, Melody, is um, what would you like to do differently, uh, if anything, you know, over the next week? So, oh, um, other people weren't here when I said this, but um, Tammy, we all know, is on her cruise still. Hopefully she'll be back next um, week. And um, then uh, you'll notice Patricia's missing this evening and we miss her, uh, but she's still having some issues with those electrolytes that she talked about last week. Um, and she just, she's just exhausted and can't stay awake uh, for our meeting because <laughs> uh, she's on the East Coast. And so our meeting starts at eight o'clock and she says she just can't stay awake past eight o'clock. She's just done in. So um, different. Uh, what would you do different? Well, for me, um, well, there's lots I'd do different, but it's like what you eat or like what time you eat. Like Christine mentioned that she, she would like to change the time she's finishing her fasts um, because she's finishing her fasts at a stressful time and she wants to change that up. So something you'd like to change. I can't even remember what I said that I'd like to change. <laughs> there are so many things I'd like to change. Um, but anyway, so um, anybody else have any other comments um, from this week, experiences or anything? I watched a real good video. Uh, I love the keto twins. They just cracked me up. Um, but I kind of got away from them. Uh, well, I mean, I saw some good videos they did, but there was another guy and I can't remember what his name is, but he was making, he says, easy peasy chaffles. And I was like, going, well, that, that sounds interesting. And it's no joke. It's like two ingredients. He uses, uh, I forgot what you call it, but it's like a little miniature waffle maker. Mm -hmm. And it makes literally one at a time, a little tiny one. And he takes ultra, uh, Sargento's ultra thin provolone cheese he puts it on the griddle and then he lets it melt and then he had mixed up three eggs and poured it on top let that start to, he then he put the second piece of provolone closed it up and about three minutes later had his chaffle took it off let it cool he was using those for hamburger buns I'm like going how cool is this I mean that that was it and this his three eggs he, I mean, on this video, he made, I guess that would have been six chaffles or made, no, four chaffles because he made two, two burgers. And he said, I probably had enough egg left over to make a whole nother one. So now I'm, I'm, I'm really wanting to 
make them. <laughs> I even wrote down the recipe. I was like, one, that's too simple. Oh. Hmm. I I I wonder if that's Steve from Serious Keto. I don't know. He's an older guy. Yeah. Steve's an older guy. He's in his 50s. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I I watched Steve from Serious Keto quite a while. I, I liked him and and he would show how to make things and and stuff a lot um and um i enjoyed that even though many of the things he made i i can't eat <laughs> but i might be willing to try the provolone um i don't have a waffle maker <laughs> well i don't see why you couldn't do that and and i mean i guess well yeah i think you've got to have a waffle maker because i was going to say you could probably do it on a griddle, but I don't still I don't think that would work because your egg would move yeah, out. Yeah, it would just go. Yeah. Anyway. But I thought it was a brilliant idea. I was like, when oh my gosh, because I've kind of I've wanted to make chopples, but mm -hmm. I was like, going, that is too much work. <laughs> I mean, when I when I am, I don't try to go prepare anything until I'm ready to eat and hungry, because otherwise I'll just sit and snack on whatever I made. I just I'm I know myself well enough. So by that point, if it's a lot of work, I just won't make whatever that is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, before keto, it, it's like me trying to make pancakes. I mean, I might get it in my head. I want pancakes or I want the kids to eat pancakes um, or something, but oh, getting out the bowl and mixing that up and then standing there while you make each of the pancakes. It's like, okay, no, <laughs> no. Yeah. I'm just too lazy. Yeah, and then so we're back to back to Melody. What are you grateful for, Miss Melody? Yeah, well, she says uh, what she'd like to change is she would like to fast more. And let me tell you, Melody, I'm on that boat too. I just haven't gotten there. Let's hope I will. Let's hope I do. By the way, I think I actually made it through a 24-hour one unintentionally. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. I didn't get sick. It was just one of those days where I was just really tired. I didn't want to get up. I pretty much stayed in bed and I oh. couldn't remember the last time I'd eaten. So it had to be close to 24 hours. Hey, that, that works. That counts. So let's see. Well, I'm in a decent health, my puppy, without reacting yeah. Oh, you met two dogs today without reacting. Good job. That's hard sometimes if that's your trigger. Yeah. Um, well, remember, her dog is a big, great Dane. And sometimes the big dogs will get pretty reactive to any other dog. They're like, oh, the puppy met. Sorry, I misread that. I thought she met two dogs and didn't react. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm thinking. And her puppy is not a teeny little puppy. It's a big dog. She calls it a puppy, but it's a big dog. Right, Melody? Big dog. How much does uh, Symphony weigh? Probably a lot. Nice. Oh, 130, 124 pounds. That's still, that's a hefty dog. That's a hefty dog. See. My little dog is 11 pounds. Um, her dog could eat my dog. <laughs> her dog weighs her goal weight. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, my goal weight, I'd have to have a much bigger dog. <laughs> for, my, for my goal weight, my cat would be the size of my chair, I think. <laughs> that would be a very frightening cat, tabby cat, just saying. Yeah, that that that'd be a bit scary there. Yeah, yeah. Come in I, and meet my cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, gee, Melody, if you meet your goal weight, you can uh, you can be twinsies with your dog. Won't that be great? You have Melody and Symphony. They go together. Melody I like and, that. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Um. So Melody, how far are you off from your goal weight? I know you've lost 50 pounds. Is it 50? 
Um, so how far are you off from your goal weight? Um, boy, I'd really have to have a big dog. I'd have to have a mastiff um, to meet my goal weight. Because I, I, well, it'd have to weigh at least 170 pounds. So yeah, that'd be a big dog. Now what, you've lost 43. So what was your starting point, Melody? Or, or just tell us how I much guess that's not my business. Old. But 43 pounds, man. Kudos, kudos. I'm serious. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So you measure tomorrow. Okay. All right. Well, then keep your measurements so you can share them next week. Um, so. <laughs> I have to do, <laughs> have to do math. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> don't feel bad melanie I, you know math is the bane of my existence i feel you know I, I i jokingly tell my kids the only reason i passed algebra is because i had a teacher who took pity on me <laughs> hey that's a that's any way to pass <laughs> yeah yeah so christine and wilma I know both of you are the most experienced fasters here. Um, what do you do the 24 hours before you go into a fast to get you ready for a fast? Do you do anything I differently? Just re, you know, I heard somebody else do this. Um, I used to, I used to just kind of go into it, and then I realized no, I probably should eat certain things before I go into it just to get me give me a boost. So. Um, Right now, I start my Sunday fast after my last meal of the day. And I stopped calling my meals, you know, breakfast, lunch, dinner. I don't call them that anymore. I have break fast, uh, or I have pre break fast in case I take a coffee, but then I have break fast and then I'll have meal, you know, two, three, whatever, just to get rid of, get it out of my head. But I started eating more fat. So I'll, and I'll take, um, a seltzer with some MCTs in it, like the night before I start the fast and I'll do like a fattier meal now. Um, I have coffee with salt. Um, if on the second morning I'm feeling a little wacky, I might actually put a little bit of MCT in the coffee with the coffee and salt. And then I try to do electrolytes during the day. And then only if I feel like I'm really down on energy, I might take an MCT tablet instead of putting it in something but it's really salt water for the most part but the the higher fat seems to have helped the start of it christine have you ever tried the lmnt it's called element powders so i don't have it with me but i actually have tried them all so i've tried oh. the elements i've tried the relights and i've tried the um perfect keto and one of the reasons why I really like the Perfect Keto one, I don't love that they have so much flavor to them, but it has more magnesium. And I, I am positive I need that. And I do, I take like two magnesium tablets a day that are 500 milligrams. But even on top of that, I feel like I need it in my electrolyte. So I use theirs. Um, so. so not all the electrolyte powders and things have magnesium usually it's potassium right they have a mix actually let me grab my chart and i can actually tell you guys okay ah she disappeared <laughs> it's magic so melody says she has about another 35 or so to go to get to her goal weight oh well, that's melody, wonderful hey you're more than halfway there that's excellent yay i remember when i was at 50 pounds and i'm like Am I ever going to make it to a hundred? I got excited when I got to 80 pounds, but that still wasn't quite my halfway mark. Was it Beck, uh, Elizabeth? No, I don't think so. Cause I need to lose, I needed to lose 150 pounds. Mm. So. So, all right. So for example, element is a thousand milligrams of salt. 2000 or 200 milligrams of potassium and 60 milligrams of magnesium it's a okay. good it's a, it's a good electrolyte right mm -hmm. um perfect keto is 650 milligrams of sodium 600 milligrams of potassium and 250 of magnesium so they 
they kind of balance theirs a little differently. And then Relight is really high on salt, is 2,090 milligrams of salt, 400 milligrams of potassium, and 50 milligrams of magnesium. And there's another one that I think I tried from one of the conferences was Ultra, Ultima. And honestly, I don't think they're worth it, but um, they only had 134 milligrams of sodium, 250 milligrams of potassium and 100 milligrams of magnesium. So I was actually really surprised when I sat down and like wrote it all down to see how different they all were. And that it, it tells me why some of them work better for other people. Yeah. Is all really. Okay. Um, well, yeah. The reason I'd asked, I, I tend to get uh, muscle cramps if I'm not eating quite a, quite the right balance of stuff. And for me, it's actually not the magnesium that does it. I'm usually low on my potassium. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Usually, yeah. When I used to teach childbirth classes, we would have our patients have a half a banana, a half an orange with a potassium and the uh, vitamin C to help with the muscle cramps at night. Hmm. Okay. Good and that's know. that's pretty much what works for me but oranges and bananas are off my schedule right now so christine um yeah. do now you said the perfect keto has a lot of flavoring in it yeah, does it, it have a sweetener yeah i think they use i think they use stevia they do use a sweetener and they also have their pills they have a pill form of electrolytes oh so. Um, and then I made my own. Um, there's a lady, Mary, Mary on YouTube that does a lot of prepping mm -hmm. and she teaches you how to make homemade electrolytes. So I made mine with Redmond's and the magnesium glycinate. You basically just open up the, the tablet and then you can get the potassium from, I guess it's like no salt things in the store. Like when people don't have a salt-free diet, you can get the no salt. That's actually potassium. And then oh. you just mix it in certain, but that's, you can make your own unflavored that way. Oh. I carry those around with me too. <laughs> oh. hmm. You might, you might put all that information in our little chat box. Okay. Um, okay. Because that would be, a, that I, you said all that and, and I immediately forgot everything you just said. <laughs> I'm, tell, well, I'm having a day where I, I don't think my head is, I think it's attached by like, wires i don't think there's any blood or oxygen going to the top floor i'm just having a day so this mary, i can find a link to mary's video on that um yeah oh that'd be great say, yeah because that would be good um and i'll then i'll put it in the video blah 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 you know when i post it okay mm -hmm. So any questions, Melody, so you can be thinking about them and writing them while I ask Wilma if there's anything special she does to prepare for a fast. I keep up my fats and I keep my electrolytes going and I take my daily minerals every day to keep me going through the fast. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, now, Wilma, you said that you will put your MCT oil in your coffee while you're fasting. Is that true? Yes, I put MCT oil in. I put electrolytes in my coffee. I do the chocolate LMNT in it. And I do probably three or four servings of electrolytes during wow. a fast to keep my electrolytes up. Okay. Oh, thanks for the link to Mary's Nest video there. Uh, I'll put that in our description of the video. Really so, affordable too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think I had realized that the no salt things substitutes were potassium. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. You know, it's, it's funny because I teach nutrition classes in my my clinic and I didn't even know that <laughs> you know yeah. but you, it's not that I purport or try to say that I know everything but it's always it's always refreshing for me when I learn something new mm -hmm. um because it it is it is a reminder that a I don't know everything and b there's always someone who can add to what I need to know mm -hmm. and I was surprised to hear like 
I was only doing like one or maybe two rounds of electrolytes during the fast. Maybe I need to kick it up more. So after listening to, how, you know, Wilma, it's up to about three a day. So maybe, maybe I should pay more attention. Do you increase your water intake, ladies, when you're doing your fast? I do out of habit. I just drink the same amount I do every day. Wow. So you don't add extra in during a fast? No. Okay. Okay. Um, anybody else have anything else to add? Any questions or anything? Because otherwise it's eight o'clock and I think I'll wind this up and say good night to everybody because, oh, okay, let's see. Melody says, oh, where'd it go? Oh, oh no, I lost the chat. Where'd it go? I've just been having weird bl blood pressure fluctuations with an episode of severe lightheadedness slash dizzy. Although my blood pressure was only 132 over 81, I typically run about 100 over 60s to 70s. Heart rate went up to 116, so the machine said, although I didn't feel anything. Okay. So Christine's asking if you're using any electrolytes and my question would be, had you gotten enough sleep and how long before that, not using any lights, but have taken, but taking magnesium, okay. And so how long before that episode had you eaten? Um, and uh, dizziness doesn't always come with high blood pressure um, or low blood pressure. It can, more likely low blood pressure to make you dizzy. High blood pressure is more likely to make you have a terrible headache. Um, uh, but uh, where were you in your eating? At that point. Melody, I find a lot of times for me personally, uh, when I'm getting lightheaded or dizzy, it's usually because I haven't re I've realized that I have not had water in quite a long time. Even though it's, it's a habit to drink, I'll go, wow, what happened here? I've like gone three hours and I haven't even had a sip of water. You know, because I'll get my busy so that my my day so busy. So for me, it's usually a little bit of I've been mean, it's a lack of water for me. I think that's what it was too, water, but I also have vertigo issues, which is also a hydration is issue too. That you in Chinese medicine, the ears are a reflection of the kidneys because it tells you about the balance of water in your bodies, which is why if you're dehydrated, it'll make you dizzy. Oh, hi, kitty cat. <laughs> yeah, this is Dewey. He's come to say hello. Yeah, so just watch your hydration, Melody. Um, and less water in your system means your blood pressure will go up. Yeah, Chinese medicine is, every time I learn something new in Chinese medicine, it blows my mind. Yeah, everything in the body is connected. I know we have specialists that work on the kidneys only or you know, on the heart only or whatever, but everything's really connected and whatever's going on in your liver can cause a problem, you know, in your bowel or whatever. So um, anyway, well, if nobody else has any other questions or anything to say, I'm going to say I'm going to stop the um, uh, recording and we'll call it a night and we will get out of the way. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and we'll meet again next week and um, see what we can do and hope Tammy's back to tell us all about her, her trip. All right, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Bye.